Good afternoon and welcome to Unfiltered. Pastor, welcome. Hey, John. Pastor, I wanted to ask the question today, why do people idolize their pastors or idolize a pastor? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Why do people idolize a pastor or their pastor? Um, I guess because idolatry is um, something that is within human nature, the desire to worship or venerate or highly honor something greater than yourself um, is within us. That's why the scripture forbids us from idolatry because by nature we have a desire to honor in a very high sense something that we consider to be superior to ourselves, you know. So idolatry <laughs> in and of itself has various, uh, various forms that it takes and it's not just... Um, you know, some graven image of any sort. It, it, it can be a religious figure because that person represents something that you aspire to and appear sometimes to, to have those things that you wish that you had yourself. And so you can bring an honor to that person where I think the scripture is very clear. You know, we, we honor those who are worthy of our honor. There is such a place, in other words, for us to show regard and respect to one another. And, and we should give honor where honor is due, and therefore ministers, you know, are to be uh, highly valued, uh, Paul has said, um, especially those who labor at the word and doctrine. And so you give honor to where honor is due, and there's a certain proper place for that. In the early church, uh, Acts 2 <clears throat> speaks concerning the fact that they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, right? And so the apostles had a certain place in the church where the people regarded them highly because they were feeding them with the word of God. But you don't see any indication that they venerated or worshiped them or gave them an honor that was reserved to God only. In our day, because there's so much darkness, somebody who seems to be doing that which we respect and want to do ourselves, but perhaps aren't gifted enough to, or qualified to or given opportunity to. We see somebody doing that which, that, uh, that which we regard highly and, and we begin to regard them highly and begin to think of them as being some kind of superstar or some kind of hero. And because there's a dearth of heroic figures in our society, we have a tendency of just gravitating towards them. And in doing so, we're feeding them something they don't need because anybody who truly is walking with the Lord and walking in the Spirit is not going to want people's attention because it is something that should be directed to God alone. And therefore, if somebody says, thank you for the work you've done, it's, it's simply, I'm only doing that which I'm supposed to do, right? And so I think that in the church today, there are those who are looking for somebody to venerate and somebody to say, yeah, that's my warrior. And... I, I learned a long time ago because I had a, a particular a minister in my life um, as a young believer, and it wasn't Pastor Chuck. It was a, a different minister that I highly regarded, and, and I had seen people respond to his ministry in, in invitations he had given, and he was older than me. He wasn't a younger man, and he wasn't a Calvary pastor. He was somebody who ministered in a different, uh, different place. But I regarded him highly, and a friend of mine and I went to hear um, him speak and Hal Lindsey and all of this, and I'll never forget turning to my friend, and I was 23 years old, and I turned to my friend and I said, you know, this guy here, you know, and I, I lifted him up, you know, I thought he was great. And, uh, and this, this pastor that I, I admired so much um, came out and said, there are you know, 20 people with $100 that you're going to give. There's, there's 50 people with 20. And, and he started telling people how much money they had in their wallet. And you need to come up and you need to give towards this great ministry. And, and I'm sitting there just aghast at what's he doing. I, I was just totally deflated. And, and then somebody sitting in front of me said, who is this clown anyway? And I sensed within myself, I'd like to say, it could have been that, that quiet voice of the Lord who spoke to me at that point, and, and it was very clear um, 
you're honoring a man, you shouldn't be honoring a man. And I, I, that was the only time I can remember that I needed to be told that. And so every man has warts. Everybody does things that, that, that only, only they and God know. And, and only God is the one who is to be reserved for the honor. And so why do people do that, John? I think it's because they want to. And also, sometimes they have somebody who is willingly accepting it. Anytime you have people standing for you, every time you walk out on the stage, that has to go to your head. And, and I believe people can be responsible for the encouragement of a man to fall because he begins to think of himself as being unable to do so. And that's a dangerous thing, a very dangerous very thing. Dangerous. And uh, we're just before shooting this, somebody was mentioning to us that uh, they were going to a church and that was almost expected to put the pastor on the pedestal or to idolize the pastor. And, and it's almost an a, a atmosphere that's created that can be dangerous, that can keep people's eyes off Jesus. Amen. And so, well, Pastor, thank you for uh, giving us some insight on that. I do want to remind the church family that we have our services at 8.30 and 10.45 this Sunday. If you're taking us through Acts chapter 7. Yeah, I'm it's trying to. Snapshots of Acts that you've been yep. uh, giving to us. And then after second service, we're going to have our church baptism. Amen. So we invite you guys to come out and join us. It's going to be a great time. Pastor, thank you for joining us today. Of course, John. Thank you guys for tuning in, and God bless you.